Hi everyone, we are the water environment design team from Northeastern University or Evergreen Engineering. Uh, we have focused our senior design project on the parking lot redesign at Rock Meadow in Belmont, Massachusetts. My name is Sam Canali. I'm Kate Angler. I'm Annie Lamonti. And I'm Emma Totsuba. Uh, before we start, we also want to thank our capstone member, um, Abdullah Fadal, for his uh, contributions. Our advisor, Professor Annalisa Onis Hayden, as well as the facilitators of the New England Water Environment Association Student Design Competition uh, for the opportunity to present at a larger scale. Uh, we've really enjoyed the experience innovating as young engineers and are really excited to share our findings with you in this presentation. So uh, Rock Meadow, as shown in red on the left, is located in Belmont, Massachusetts, which is a suburb west of Boston. Although over its history, it's mainly been used as farmland. Um, today, Rock Meadow is a conservation area used for four seasons of recreational activities, which include birding, gardening, hiking, cross country skiing, and mountain biking. Uh, it is managed by the Belmont Conservation Commission, who is our client for this project. Um, they explained that while visitors really enjoyed the meadows, um, the entrance experience, which is shown on the right, um, is not as positive. So our team visited the site in January and will now present some of the photos that we took. Um, first, they show that the lot is disorganized without any delineated parking stalls or circulation pattern. It's also undersized for the number of visitors that Rock Meadow receives, um, only having capacity for about 12 cars at a time. Uh, which causes um, cars to have to park along the main road. Um, next, we see that there is une an unevenly graded and inconsistently paved surface throughout the driveway, uh, the parking lot. Uh, these conditions combined with the lack of any stormwater management system um, cause puddling after um, any storm event. And then um, the third photo shows that the driveway is very eroded. Um, also, it is steeper and narrower than regulations allow, which causes issues for accessibility um, to visitors and also two-way traffic for drivers. Um, other challenges um, not shown, um, but definitely worth noting, are that the signage is dilapidated, um, that there are no habitat boundaries, that there's poor security, and that there's a land management issue as um, Rock Meadow spans two properties. So we approached our design by breaking it up into three scope areas, which are the parking lot and driveway design, um, the stormwater management systems, and um, any additional site improvements. Um, each of these aspects of our design were developed with our design considerations in mind, uh, which are shown on the right. These five considerations were selected and ranked alongside our client um, based on their expectations for the project. Uh, the design criteria considerations were the criteria that we evaluated um, our design uh, alternatives with using decision matrices, which will be explained later on in the process. Um, but these are community satisfaction, which relates primarily to aesthetic value, effectiveness, which refers to functionality, cost, which refers to initial economic investment, sustainability, which refers to environmental impact, and adaptability, which refers to the flexibility of the solution to change um, in any future conditions. On March 10th, our team met with the Belmont Conservation Commission and several Belmont residents for a town hall meeting to present our ideas and designs and receive their feedback. Um, so we administered a survey to those present at the meeting and we were able to decide to move forward with expanding the current parking lot and using a combination of a vegetative filter strip and a bioswale and rain garden to treat the stormwater runoff. We also received feedback on further site improvements, including adding an additional pedestrian access path, a bike rack, and a composting toilet. Taking this feedback in mind, we went through several design iterations before finalizing the design shown here. We first extended the driveway width from 14 feet to 18 feet to allow for two-way traffic in and out of the parking lot. We then increased the amount of parking from 12 spaces to 26 spaces, which includes two van accessible handicap spaces. Uh, we added a paved pedestrian path running parallel to the driveway, and the septic path that previously led to the west end of the lot was relocated to intersect with the main path into the meadow. A pollinator path was added along the existing pedestrian path north of the driveway to encourage native species to return to the area, 
and a scenic vista was added to make the entrance into the meadow more aesthetically pleasing. Some of the side improvements include no parking signage along the driveway and no parking except for handicapped vehicle signage in front of the two van accessible spaces. Additionally, a composting toilet was added north of the parking lot to create a sustainable bathroom experience. Two video surveillance cameras were added to the site, one along the south side of the driveway and one next to the composting toilet. To treat the stormwater runoff from the driveway, a vegetated filter strip was added along the new paved pedestrian path. Gutters along the south and west edge, edges of the parking lot were added to convey additional runoff from the driveway and also the parking lot runoff into the bioswale where it will be pre-treated and then infiltrated into the ground after flowing through the rain garden. The process for designing the parking lot started with our team analyzing the cost and benefits of keeping the parking lot in its current place and simply expanding it um, to completely relocating it north of its current place. While both options did have their advantages and disadvantages, we ultimately chose the expansion option for three main reasons. We were able to more than double the amount of parking available. The costs associated with backfilling to even the grade of the site were significantly less than the relocation option. And finally, there would be less environmental impacts during construction with the expansion option. After evaluating um, potential best management practices for this site, we decided on the three Annie mentioned based on decision matrices and community feedback. I'm going to go more in depth on the design and functionality of our chosen BMPs. The vegetated filter strip is located north of the driveway. It's a graded grass area. It is intended to treat and promote infiltration of runoff from the driveway. The slope of the filter strip is 11% longitudinally and 2% across to the north. We've chosen to extend the filter strip 50 feet in order to get credit for 45% TSS removal. To account for our goal of adaptability, we evaluated the 25 year storm. In this evaluation, the water velocity would be expected to be 0.12 feet per second which results in a seven minute residence time. Additionally, we've chosen to recommend path rush as the grass cover, as it's a dense, hardy native grass that can withstand drought, flooding, and moderate salinity levels. Moving on to the bioswale, which is found on our site plan west of the parking lot. This BMP is a grass channel with additional plants in the bed of the channel. The design swale for this site has sides sloped at five to one, a bed width of four feet, and a top width of 14 feet. Additionally, it has a two foot layer of permeable underlying soil. The bioswale is intended to treat the runoff from the parking lot area and convey it to the rain garden for infiltration. The bioswale receives credit for 70% TSS removal and variable phosphorus removal. For the parking lot area, the 25 year peak discharge is 1.1 cubic feet per second. And for the peak discharge, the water height in the swale will be expected to be about two and a half inches which is within the allowed ponding depth of four inches. The residence time for the peak discharge would be expected to be about four minutes. In order to avoid overflow, the swale has been designed to be able to hold the entire water quality volume of 668 cubic feet. If entirely full, the surface storage would fully infiltrate in 15 hours. The runoff is sent to the rain garden through a four inch diameter HDPD pipe held in a six inch gravel layer. Finally, the rain garden is located northwest of the bioswale. It consists of a three foot layer of permeable soil for, for infiltration. There's a one foot berm surrounding in order to contain the runoff in the garden area as it infiltrates. The rain garden is intended to further treat and infiltrate the runoff from the parking lot area after it's conveyed by the bioswale. With the pre-treatment of the bioswale, the rain garden receives credit for 90% TSS removal and 30 to 90% phosphorus removal. This designed rain garden is 560 square feet. The subsurface storage is 504 cubic feet of water. Our recharge volume is 401 cubic feet of water, therefore all of it is able to be held subsurface. The full subsurface drainage time is 27 hours, which is within the standard of 72 hours. To evaluate the 25 year storm, we've ensured that the bioswale can effectively convey the amount of water necessary through the under drain pipe. The maximum flow through the inlet pipe would be 0.66 cubic feet per second. And this flow rate is able to convey significantly more water than we would expect from the 25 year runoff. Based on the expected depth of water to accumulate per hour and the you know, time that that depth takes to infiltrate, we've determined that the 25 year runoff will not exceed the total allowed depth in the rain garden at any given time. 
Additionally, the plants used for both the rain garden and the biosphere will be a mixture of shrubs and field forbs. So once we had chosen our treatment components um, and the layout, we created a detailed grading plan to prevent erosion and puddling uh, while also promoting proper drainage flow paths. The parking lot and driveway were graded to adhere to mass dot standards um, and these red arrows show the direction of grade over the site. Um, the driveway was given a uniform maximum slope of 11%, um, which is a significant improvement from uh, the uneven 14% it used to be. It also has a cross slope of 2% to the north, which directs water to treatment and infiltration. Um, the two lengths of vegetative filter strip and the walkway alongside it are also graded um, 2% um, to the north. The parking lot has a longitudinal slope of 2% to the west and 2% to the south. Um, so the water should flow to the southwest corner um, following the curving along the south and west sides of the parking lot um, to be to enter the biofoil at the curb cut in the southwest corner. Um, runoff will flow through the biosoil and invaded the rain garden via the four inch pipe that we mentioned earlier. Um, and then the dirt covered entry will also have a 2% cross slope uh, to the west and to the north. So we've selected um, the preferred alternatives for the bathroom facilities, signage and video surveillance on the site um, based on our design criteria and the feedback from our client. Um, so this includes a composting toilet, um, required parking signage, and video security. Uh, the bathroom facility model was chosen because it was not electric and waterless, um, considering uh, the conservation restriction for Rock Meadow. And the bathroom facility system is acceptable for outdoor use um, and would function best if offline for the colder winter months. Um, We've included a no signage as well as handicap signage. Um, and as for security, we are adding two additional uh, cameras for surveillance on the property. And this is our preliminary cost estimate for the redesign project. This estimate um, addresses our seven key areas, which are demolition, earthwork, hardscaping, landscape, green infrastructure, um, additional site improvements, and labor. Um, so it includes the projected front cost of both the materials and man hours for installation. Um, we made this using RS means and the most recent Mass Department of Transportation Construction Project estimator. Um, these labor costs reflect the construction schedule, which is in the next slide. Um, this is a schedule made using the critical path method and the duration is estimated to be around eight weeks, um, but this is conservative and um, we made it so it could be condensed in the field if it needs to be. So uh, in closing, uh, we have proposed a design for the Belmont Conservation Commission to improve the existing conditions at the entrance to Rock Meadow Conservation Area, um, which are shown currently um, as they are on the left. Uh, our design solution was selected using decision matrices, surveys of the client and community and informed engineering recommendations. Um, overall, it increases parking capacity by 117% decreases the driveway slope by three to four percent, improves aesthetics significantly, and promotes stormwater management using um, three innovative green infrastructure systems. Um, so uh, while COVID-19 has delayed the implementation of our design entrance to Rock Meadow, we look forward to its construction uh, one day uh, using our detailed design uh, drawings and specifications. Um, thank you again for this opportunity to share our findings and feel free to reach out to the team um, via the email shown um, if you have any questions about our project. Thank you.